Hey, what's going on? So today I want to do a very candid video, sort of off the cuff, uh, about some of the lessons that I've learned during quarantine. And I think this is sort of an interesting time to be doing this video because I'm actually going back into quarantine. Uh, my gym is closing down for the second time because the numbers of COVID have spiked in our county. And so the governor is taking us down again, so to speak. And I figured, why not do a what I've learned about quarantine and myself, about my health, whether it's my weight or my mental health or whatever it might be, lots of different things that I've learned about myself that you can also kind of relate to, because I'm sure that we all went through a very similar time. And this is just through the lens of a trainer who has a different perspective based on experience and a bunch of other stuff. Hope you enjoy, let's get started. So the first thing that really hit me right away was realizing that I didn't need motivation to do a workout. I think a lot of times we feel like we need to be motivated to do a workout, to eat better, to do whatever, and we sort of wait for that motivation in order to get things done. And what I realized was is that at a time like quarantine where I had nothing better to do, I realized that <clears throat> I could have done anything. I could have just laid on the couch. I could have played video games. I could have not done anything to improve my health. And, and what I realized was is I didn't have the same sort of drive as I did when I was working uh, out at a gym and, and, and had access to lots of different weights and things like that. Learned a very interesting lesson. In, in fact, I think I even journaled this down. Motivation is not a you know requirement for getting a workout, for eating healthier. It, you should have a deeper reason why you do it. You should have a reason why you actually want to achieve what you want to achieve. And even if that just means maintaining where you currently are at, what you've worked so hard for, that can be good enough. That is the way in which you have motivation. And if that isn't good enough for you, then realize that doing the work creates the result, which then gives you the motivation afterwards. That was a big lesson for me because it made such a big difference in how I approached my workouts. It wasn't about being motivated and then working out because that can happen at you know at a spur of a moment. It was about getting the workout done, getting the results, and then being motivated by my hard work. The second lesson that I learned is that being consistent is more important than being perfect. So obviously in a less ideal than less than ideal situation like not being able to work out at a gym or not having a normal routine, working out at home can feel sort of suboptimal. It can feel like it's not enough, especially when you're used to lifting heavier weights and suddenly you have to either find creative ways to make the same resistance happen or make some kind of challenging effect with at home workouts, sort of always falling short because you just don't have the same access to equipment. Another shift that I went through was going from thinking, okay, I have to do this exactly the way it's written out to doing it the best I could given the situation and giving the given the equipment that I had and sure my workouts weren't as challenging in in the same sort of way I had to find new ways to make it more challenging but another way that made it really important just for everyday life is that even during quarantine I wouldn't always sleep that well or I wouldn't have that great of a day I would be more stressed out because you know you know maybe money was getting short and all of a sudden it was like okay how do we manage our bills whatever it might be that you went through I went through a very similar process where some days I didn't want to work out and I had the luxury of not working out because I didn't have any reason to like I didn't have any reason to stay in shape for you know coaching my clients or I didn't have I, I could very easily just sit on the couch and eat potato chips which definitely happened every now and then I'm, I definitely was not perfect in fact I I think I gained at least uh, you know five to ten pounds during quarantine within the first month because it was sort of like a vacation in a way, right? It was sort of an unplanned vacation. And because food was, you know, you couldn't go out to eat, you would dine in. And it was sort of this like fun period. And as a result, I, I gained body fat. I ate more calories than I consumed. And I certainly wasn't working out to the same degree. So, you know, when I went through that, the mindset of going, okay, I got to get back into a routine. I can't just, you know, I was getting depressed. Like it was very interesting to see how not living the life that I knew was best for me caused me to be more depressed than otherwise might be, you know, thought because like at first I thought maybe, okay, this is going to be great. Like I'm going to, I don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. anymore. Like, and then what I realized was, is that like routine was really what made me happy. Having like some sort of structure really made me happy. And when that was gone, I had to create new structure, um, which goes kind of back to the old, uh, the first thing I talked about, which is motivation. You know, you have to create your own routine. No one's gonna create it for you. 
And in a time like quarantine where you're not obligated to go to work or you're required not to go to work, you have to create your own routine, which can be very challenging in the beginning because managing your time with so much free time can be a lot more challenging in a lot of cases than having a set schedule where you know you're gonna be working eight hours and then you have to sort of balance everything else around that. So learning to be consistent and not perfect actually got me better results than what I was doing in the past, which was trying to always work with the most ideal situation, which a lot of times was not a consistent, uh, was not, I was not able to stay consistent with that. And so as a result, I was less effective and I got less results. As I started to become more consistent, I started becoming more productive. My workouts started to show more results. My nutrition was improving because I wasn't always trying to always hit this amount of protein, always hit this many carbs. Um, you know, I did my best to hit the amount of calories I needed, but I wasn't always perfect. And having this sort of flexibility where I didn't feel like I was obligated to do the exact perfect thing in order to get the result and still get the result made the biggest change for me, you know, during quarantine. All right, so the next thing that I learned was that home workouts suck. <laughs> um, and they don't suck because there's anything wrong with the workouts. It's just like when you're working out at home, you can just, like if you're working out in your garage or your room or something like that, you can just stop what you're doing and literally go lay on the couch and do nothing. Like there's no sort of incentive to keep going, right? You always have the option of stopping like instantly, where is if you go to the gym, you went through the effort to put on your workout clothes, you went through the effort of driving there, you're not gonna just not do anything once you get to the gym, right? So there's sort of like a buy-in almost. When you go to a gym, you sort of buy into the experience and committing to the experience because you had to go to the gym as opposed to just doing something at home. So oftentimes I would be in the middle of a really hard set and I'm like, I don't wanna do this anymore. And it was so much easier to convince myself mentally that like, yeah, you don't have to, like just go you know, do something else. Like you could do a million other things. Um, and so that was really hard. So that sort of psychological bat battle made things a lot more challenging as I went through, you know, the process of getting home workouts. And eventually I, you know, I overcame that. Like one of the things that I started doing is I started doing more frequent short workouts. So instead of doing a 45 minute workout all at once, one of the things I would do is I would do 15 minute workout um, or, or 20 minute workouts. And I would just call it at that. And then I would do that either twice a day or sometimes just once a day. Like I was really in just maintenance mode. It was just like, just maintain whatever I've built so far and find new ways to do different exercises and find new ways to help my clients with exercises that they can do at home or they can start doing at the gym that can help improve them when they you know get fully back into a, a fully functioning gym so that was a really interesting experience yeah home workouts get really boring really fast you, there's a lot less variety there's not as many options. Uh, if you're trying to build muscle, it's it's possible, especially if you're brand new, but it, when you're sort of a more advanced lifter like me, there's nothing better than a heavy deadlift or a heavy um, barbell you know, squat or bench press or you know, overhead press or something like that. All right, so probably the most important thing that I remembered, because this is something I learned a long time ago and I really emphasize this, not only in my coaching, but in my philosophy as a coach in general, and that is nutrition is more important than exercise for your health and for your weight loss or for managing your weight. Now, a lot of people are gonna you know, criticize me for saying this. A lot of people are gonna say, oh, how can you say that? They're both equally important. One of the things that quarantine taught me was is that I, I really don't, and, and most, of, most of my clients actually, do not have a firm grasp on nutrition when routine is completely mismanaged. Like I mentioned in the very beginning of quarantine, for me, I gained seven to 10 pounds. You know, some of it was probably water weight, but like, you know, a good chunk of it was fat because I sort of gave myself this like fuck it mode let's just have fun and like be on vacation and order out and you know buy this thing and try this food and it wasn't all with the intention of just being a glutton and a sloth i mean a lot of it was like let's have some fun and let's try these foods we don't normally eat because we're on vacation because we're on quarantine and what i realized was is when when you do that it's very easy to overeat calories because you're not really focusing on the nutrition or the health or or even hunger cues to a large degree it's mostly like let's eat because this is pleasurable instead of let's eat because this is you know better for your nutrition or better for your health and so the reason why i make this claim and why i 
I have such a focus in my business on nutrition is because nutrition is very, it's very easy to go down the slippery slope where you just sort of give up completely instead of having this moderation or balance. And one of the things I learned during quarantine is, is that no matter how hard I worked out, uh, my nutrition is what drove my body fat to either, you know, go down or go up. And in a lot of cases, I was still working out like I normally did. In fact, I was working out more often than I did when I was working a regular job because I had, you know, I was doing more body weight workouts. So they weren't, I didn't get as sore from that or it wasn't as challenging. And so it was easier to do a workout every single day. Arguably, I was burning more calories a day than I would have otherwise. And yet my body fat still went up because my calories went up. And as a result of that, another thing that I realized was is the more I worked out, the more hungry I was. So like on days where I wouldn't work out, my appetite wasn't that strong and it was a lot easier to manage calories. Whereas on days where I would work out, I would actually have an increased appetite, but I wouldn't like match the amount of calories that I, you know, estimated in terms of how many I burned to the amount of calories that I was consuming as a result of it, an uptick or a upregulation of my appetite. So to give you some numbers, like let's say that I burned 200 calories through exercise on a workout that I did. Sorry, my dog just knocked something over. Are you okay, Aria? Yeah, you're gonna be all right. It scare you. So one, like for example, I would burn 200 calories through my workout, let's say, you know, I don't know that for sure, I'm just giving a hypothetical. I would probably eat twice that amount because my appetite was, you know, increased and I have a very strong appetite as it is. Like I gotta be very careful because of, you know, how strong, how active I am already predisposition, gives me a predisposition to have a higher and stronger appetite, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but mismanaged, it can very well turn into excess body fat that very easily comes on. Uh, Cause it's much easier to, eat more calories than it is to burn it. And that was another thing that I was reminded of. I sort of always knew this and I, I sort of preached this in my coaching, but you know, it's so much easier. You can eat 200 calories in 10 minutes, whereas it might take you like 30 minutes to burn 200 calories through a run or, you know, through a high intensity workout or a strength training workout. So, you know, it's, it's so much easier to eat more calories in a shorter amount of time than it is to burn more calories in a shorter amount of time. And that simple fact of human evolution and, and energy balance really hit home when it came to how nutrition affected my my health and my weight. So I came out of quarantine really realizing that the most beneficial lesson that I learned was is that if I can't get a solid workout in, I should definitely make sure that I'm dialed in with my nutrition. And that's the lesson that I wanna give most specifically to you is that I hope that quarantine taught you that your nutrition is more important than your exercise in a lot of ways. And that you probably have a weakness when it comes to your nutrition more so than you have with exercise. I mean, hell, maybe you have a weakness for not doing either, but you know, quarantine really taught me like, hey, your nutrition is super important for body composition and you're gonna have a much easier time maintaining or losing weight when you manage your calories as opposed to trying to outrun or outwork out a diet that's really high in calories. All right, another lesson that I learned is that keeping junk food in your house, regardless of quarantine or not, is a stupid idea unless you wanna eat all of it and you wanna be tempted by it 24 seven and you want to exhaust your willpower trying to resist eating the entire bag of chips that you have in your house. So towards the end of quarantine, uh, the last couple of weeks, one of the things that I did is I just stopped buying the junk food. I stopped buying the pleasurable food that was fun because of quarantine. Uh, because it really wasn't worth it. Uh, some people have more self-control than that. Some people can have sort of these more pleasurable high calorie foods that are very easy to overeat in their house and not be tempted by them. I am not one of those people. If it's in my house and I know it's in my house, I'm gonna be thinking about it until I eat it. Uh, and because I was pretty much spending my entire time in my house, save a couple of you know hours a week going to the grocery store or driving to go get you know takeout food, uh, I pretty much spent all my time in my house and then there was a lot of downtime even though I tried to stay busy. And as a result, there was some snacking that was, you know, sort of subconscious in some ways. I mean, it was it was conscious, let's be honest, but it was sort of like a subconscious whispering that, you know, hey, go, you know, you got tortilla chips and guacamole and you say those two words and my ass is eating that entire thing. So keeping junk food out of the house has been a really positive, uh, I wouldn't say rule because rule makes it sound like it's a strict kind of, drawn in the sand sort of thing, but uh, something that I like to do to help manage my, you know, uh, 
my overeating of foods that are really not that nutritious. Another lesson I learned is that cooking at home really isn't as inconvenient as you might think. Uh, when you're working a nine to five job or you're working eight hours a day, it's, it's definitely going to be harder because you have less time to devote to you know, buying the food, prepping the food, if there's any preparation, you know, most, most home meals have preparation involved, cooking the food and then, you know, eating it. So it's, it's a, there's a lot more steps than, you know, ordering takeout and just eating. Um, but what I found was, is that because I had more time, it was easier to learn new recipes that then became easier to do in the future because I already knew what to expect. So, you know, home cooking really is a lot cheaper than, you know, ordering out. And so what I encourage you to do is, to start small, like don't definitely don't go on Pinterest and find like 40 different recipes you want to try. Try one every two weeks maybe, and you know just give it a shot. And as you get used to it, you can start making it faster because you're not going to have as much unknown. There's going to be some other things that you're going to be able to to learn and pick up and get used to, so that it sort of becomes a staple in your nutrition. And it's also something you can bank on being, you know, having enough protein, having some veggies, having good quality whole food carbohydrates, being filling, and also being tasty at the same time. Um, you know, home cooked meals don't have to be bland and boring in order to be healthy. I think that's a common misconception. And in all reality, you can make things taste really good and still be healthy and not have, you know, loads and loads of excess calories. So that was another thing that I learned. Another important thing on the nutrition end that I learned was that tracking my nutrition through calories and macronutrients actually gave me more flexibility and freedom than simply just trying to estimate what I was getting in terms of carbs, proteins, veggies, and fats, and all the and, and all the stuff. It also sort of reopened my eyes to how many calories uh, you know, certain foods have. Like, I think the classic example I always give is that peanut butter is a very calorically dense food, but there were other times where I was like, wow, really, I, I had no idea I was eating that many carbs, uh, uh, or that I was overeating in terms of portion size that many carbohydrates. Now Aria is um, kicking the phone stand. So if things are getting wobbly, that's why. So I realized that, you know, by tracking, I became more aware of, of actual portion sizes and, and actual portion sizes were I was giving myself sometimes two, two and a half portion sizes, especially with the carbs, but let's not tell anyone that. Um, and as a result, portioning out my carbs helped me cut calories without, you know, having to be super like diligent and strict and, and, and uh, like overly, uh, you know, restrictive. It was more like, okay, this is a portion of carbs. I'm getting what I need, but I'm not getting any more. And that was a very powerful, empowering thing to to witness and to to actually do once I once I actually got in the routine of doing it. 